Have you ever wondered what causes cravings in the first place? We're going to break that down for you today. We're also going to help you identify what's a hunger, thirst, or an emotional response craving. And then we're going to put all the things that we've learned and put it together so that you can be in control of the next craving when it hits you. Everybody, I'm Nora and you're watching Nori Lori's Keto and Health and today we are breaking down cravings. <sighs> I don't know anybody who has not ever dealt with a craving at some time. So what the heck is going on with the body that we're having all these cravings, right? So basically if you come to a new way of eating, which you probably have, that's why you're watching this, you've come from a very carb heavy diet. So your body was initially used to running on this level of sugar or carbs or glucose. And you're probably running at a very much lower level now. The body is essentially freaking out. It's used to being at this level and your body is like, we must be starving. We need to get back up to this level. So it creates these cravings of carby type foods so that you'll get back up to this level. Ultimately, uh, glucose is not a good source of fuel for the body, but the body does prefer it. It can uptake that glucose very easily and then it likes to store the glucose for later. Later like, I don't know, you get lost on a deserted island or you get lost in the woods and you do not have a fuel or fuel source or a food source and you have the ability to have stored glucose so that you can go a few days without food. That's essentially what it's thinking. So it creates these cravings to get those sugar levels back up. But if you've come in into a keto diet, ultimately that is a no-no and we need to stay down from this level to down here and stabilize those blood sugars. So as you're transitioning and your cells are transitioning over to using a different, more effective fuel source that burns evenly and longer, which is ketones, um, you're going to be on the struggle train and you're going to have some really insane cravings. And this whole video is to help you to not give in to those cravings so that you can effectively run on ketones and hopefully those cravings will become a thing of the past. So let's dive into this. Should we limit our carbs before we start keto? That is a really good question. And I think there's going to be very varying opinions on this. I do think you should have a very short transition window and that would be like a week to maybe two weeks of transitioning to what will be your keto diet. And transitioning, I'm talking about going from Coke to Diet Coke, Mountain Dew to Diet Mountain Dew, figuring out what your biggest go-to carb items are and start figuring out keto-friendly replacements for them and start incorporating them in your diet. And in that transition time, your body is still going to be fighting you because you're still used to being up here at this level, but you're kind of gradually going down. Um, so you're just going to have cravings because it wants to be up here. When you do start keto, you need to stop. Don't just lower your carbs. You need to go ahead and get down to that 20 grams of carbs or less. You need to go ahead and face that carb monster because if you don't, you're probably going to end up giving in to one of your cravings and you're going to undo all the work that you've worked so hard on. So that's why these next things that I'm talking about, it's going to be helping you figure out what your cravings are coming from, thirst, hunger, or emotional responses, and things that you can do to get around these cravings so that you don't give in to these cravings on your journey. So, so your macros might need some tweaking. We hardly ever get our macros right the very first time, okay? Yeah, there's lots of macro calculators out there and you could go to three different calculators and they're all gonna give you different macro settings. So you need to find a macro calculator that you like 
and go with it. So if you're having cravings, it can be as simple as you're not getting enough fat or you're not getting enough protein. So if you're feeling like you're hungry, but you're sluggish, you probably are going to need a little more protein. But if you're just feeling hangry, you're probably going to need a little more fat macros. And it's okay to do that. It's okay to bump them up a little bit and see what works for you. Um, the only downside is if you bump them up too fast or bump them up a big number, you might see the weight loss come to a stop. So if it does come to a stop, bump them down. So that first thing is let's just those macros specifically for you as an individual. Let's not forget the fiber. I know, but Nora, vegetables have carbs. I don't want you afraid of carbs. You get 20 grams of carbs and they should come from good vegetables. Um, it just takes a little bit of planning on your part so that you're getting good healthy carbs in uh, from your vegetables. The fiber is important and vegetables have a lot of vitamins and minerals that the body needs and if there's a lack of these vitamins and minerals that can create cravings to get these vitamins and minerals in. And another thing about fiber is it is slow to digest in our system, so it is going to help fill us up and keep us full for a little bit longer, hence reducing the chances of having certain types of cravings. And you definitely won't be having a craving because you're hungry. Don't forget about your water, okay? Um, I know we hear this, it doesn't matter if you're on keto or other diets or just normal, we're always preaching you need more water in your diet. Uh, if your body fluids drop just by one or two percent, you can actually start experiencing some symptoms of dehydration, which can be fatigue, um, headaches, lightheadedness, um, dizziness, uh, trouble focusing and concentrating, just to name a few. So it is very important that we get in that water. But not only do you need water, because keto is... You're always flushing out fluids because keto is a natural diuretic. Um, it's helping you flush out the inflammation and everything. You always need to be replacing your electrolytes. So it's really easy to get an electrolyte imbalance along being dehydrated. So you also need to be making sure that you're getting in those electrolytes. I don't care if you're just salting your water or if you're adding in electrolyte powders or making your own electrolyte concoction. Um, just be really mindful of that. You need those. Be one of those that tends to eat when they're stressed, bored, or do you know you're an emotional eater? I'm an emotional eater, and I think most people probably know that they do eat um, or are emotional eaters to some degree. We don't, you know, we, we don't have control over what people are going to say to us or what they're going to do. We don't have control of how our days are going to go at work. Uh, we don't have control. You know, we just, there is things that come into our lives that we don't have control over. But there is a few things we do have control over. One of those being is, I'm going to give you some ideas on how to read these type of cravings, is we have control to try to interpret our cravings. Okay. If we take the minute and think about it, we can kind of figure out what that craving is, whether it be thirst, hunger, or an emotional response. The second thing we can control is <laughs> what we put in our mouth, okay? Those are the two things we can control in life. So let's just talk about this, okay? So generally, cravings kind of come in in waves. They kind of come in, they go, come in, and go. Hunger does the same thing. Now, if this wave was a big wave and washed over you very quickly, like your craving just hits you, you got to have it right now, right now. It is probably in an emotional response type of craving. If it's kind of come in and gradually built up, 
it is probably you are close to eating again and you didn't have enough fat to carry you from one meal to the next or protein or you're just a little more hungrier that day um, but if it gradually builds it's probably going to be thirst or hunger so those are two really good indicators to kind of Think about it. it's like okay did this grad you know did this build up gradually or did this just hit me all at once another thing to keep in mind is um, what kind of things are you craving because some studies indicate that you know just a stressful day uh, problems with significant others friends things like that breakups you're gonna probably go run for sugar and sweet things if you're angry and frustrated, you're probably going to go for things like pizza, uh, chips, or spicier things. The more spice, the more frustrated or angry you might be. Uh, so kind of think about what you're craving um, that can kind of cue you in. Because sometimes you may not even be aware that emotionally something is going on with you. Like it's subconsciously in your mind. And you may not even be aware that you're actually bothered, but this craving has hit you. Because I'm going to tell you from experience, whether you're a month into keto or a year in, emotional response cravings are going to hit you. And you're going to be like, whoa. So kind of getting some control over that and starting to read that will kind of help you interpret that. So some things that you can do, rather it be hunger or trying to figure out if it's hunger or not, would be distractions. Okay. So something you could do is go brush your teeth. I know it sounds weird, but you go brush your teeth because who wants to eat after you brush your teeth or drink something because, you know, the taste is affected. I mean, it, it, it's not even going to be satisfying. So that's one thing you could do. You could go for a walk. This will help kind of direct your energy to the activity that you're doing. Maybe it'll clear your mind or bring you some clarity and thinking like, oh, that's what it is. You could do meditation to help clear your mind. You could do yoga. You could color. You could watch a funny sitcom or a funny movie that you purely enjoy to help distract you. But if that craving is still there and you try distractions and it's still there, um, you know, like I said, you can either go ahead and eat, like if your next meal is coming soon, or just go ahead and give in to that craving. But when you do go ahead and give in to that craving, if it is an emotional response, you want to make sure that you have keto friendly items on hand. So meal planning could be something you could do as a distraction too. Just thought about that. Um, that way you can guarantee that you have keto friendly options available for you, but treat it like a treat. You don't want to have desserts and snacks every day. You want to have these type of things as treats. So you could have a friendly keto alternative or a fat mom and have that treat to help satisfy that craving because at that point you've done just about everything that you can for that craving and it is a true actual craving and just go ahead and treat that craving and move on. So, are you doing lazy or dirty keto? Have you cheated on your journey yet? Well, let's talk about it. I'm going to get into the dirty and lazy keto aspect of it. Maybe you're tracking your net carbs or carbs and maybe you're not. If you're not, it is very easy to go over on your carbs and that could be a reason, excuse me, that could be a reason why you are still craving. Now, if you are tracking your carbs and you know that you're 20 grams or less, but you're still having some cravings, maybe you're eating things like keto bread, keto bars, keto cookies, all these keto friendly foods maybe you've made some alternative sweets of your own but and you're still seeing that you're craving you could be one of those people that their brain doesn't interpret sugar and alternative sweeteners differently you could be one of those that as soon as that sweet sensation hits your tongue it interprets it interprets as sugar and you may be having a, a glucose response or an insulin response or you might even see that it kicks you out of ketosis so if you still having a lot of cravings and you know 
that your 20 net carbs or less, you may have to do total carbs. And if that doesn't work, you may just have to cut some of those things out of your diet and see if that helps you with your cravings. So that's the first part of it. The second part is going to be about actually cheating. So have you cheated? Was it just a cheat meal and you could go make your next meal keto? Did a cheat meal turn into a cheat day? Did that cheat day turn into cheat days, weeks, months, stop keto? Maybe you're coming back from one of those and you're redoing keto and you're trying to get on top of those cravings. What I'm going to say is not sugar-coated. And I'm saying it because I want you to keep your expectations real. The whole goal of keto is to get you fat adapted. That is like where the magic happens, okay? When you're fat adapted six to eight weeks later, you are going to experience things like increased energy. You're not going to have as much hunger. You are not going to hardly experience any cravings. I'm not going to say cravings go away totally 100%. You may be like me, you'd be like, ooh, you know what? That sounds kind of good. And it's just a thought and it's gone. So is it really a craving or not? I don't know. But anyway, we want to get to that, that magic area. Once we get fat adapted, not only that, we also start to become metabolically flexible. I'm going to come back around to metabolic flexibility. If in the beginning you cheat and you're not fat adapted, you literally have started over at square one. And if you really struggled with cravings in the beginning, maybe even had keto flu, you might have put you back to absolute square one and you might have all those cravings come back to you and you might even experience the keto flu again. And, and I don't want you to experience that. I don't want you to have to struggle. I want you to be uncomfortable because we're all uncomfortable. We're all addicted to sugar to some extent. And I want you to hit that golden spot so you see all the benefits that keto has got to offer. And I want you starting over at square one. And we are a social media age. You probably have joined some uh, groups and you may have even heard people say, well, I've cheated and I'm still losing weight. Yeah, I gained a couple of, couple of water pounds, but they'll come off and maybe they have a lot of weight to lose and even though they cheated it was still less than what their normal is and they're continuing to see loss well here's the thing every time you cheat you push fat adaption further away from you so instead of taking six to eight weeks maybe it may 10 weeks or 12 weeks or longer and I, I don't want that to happen to you. I want you, because we're training our body at a cellular level to change from one fuel type to another to get these benefits. And what happens is your journey is individualized to you. So what one person says is going on over here might not hold true for you. And what's going on for you might hold true, not hold true for them. And the thing of it is, you don't know their story from what they tell you. Maybe they're already metabolically flexible and they can have a cheat, which we're fixing a circle around to. Or maybe they just started their journey, but because they have so much weight to lose, they're still seeing those losses. But two months later, you see where they've stalled. Or maybe they say, I bought a blood meter and tested my ketones and I'm not registering ketones or my ketones are really low. You don't know what their story is. I want you to focus on you. So circling back around, I want you to get fat adapted so that you can start gaining metabolic flexibility. And what that means is once you're fat adapted, your body is going through all this healing, but not only that, it has the cellular machinery to switch between the two fuel sources. So not right after fat adapted do you have the flexibility, but the longer that you go, the more flexibility you have. That's why I'm saying, the longer you do keto and you're fat adapted, you're going to have some metabolic flexibility. So later on, let's say the holidays do come and you do have a slight cheat. You're probably going to be able to have that cheat, make your next meal keto. You're already going to know 
Okay, I'm gonna gain a couple of pounds of water weight. I'm gonna have some cravings, but it's okay because I'm gonna go right back to being keto and I'm gonna be okay. I'm not gonna struggle the whole day or days or weeks to initially you quit. Or a special event comes up, vice versa. You're gonna have that metabolic flexibility to switch between the two fuel sources. As soon as the glucose is gone, the body will switch right back over to your ketone fuel source. So that's what I'm saying is, I'm not saying you can't cheat, I'm just saying cheats need to be planned. And if you have a really hard time not giving in to cheats, I have a video, it's eight tips to consider before starting any diet. And one of those tips includes having a diet buddy. So if you're really struggling, you might need that diet buddy to help you through a craving. And if you do give in, they can help you stay on track and make that next meal keto because I want you to be successful on your journey. Hidden carbs might be sabotaging your work. And just kind of building off in the last thing that I talked about. Um, in the beginning of your journey, I absolutely think that you should have some kind of tracking app. I don't care if you're tracking all your macros or just your net carbs or total carbs. Um, because you're gonna find that certain things have got hidden carbs that you didn't realize. And then when you track it, you're like, whoa, where'd that come from? And one of the very first things that kind of comes off the top of my mind, and it's probably because this is what I'm seeing in social media a lot right now, is you go to a restaurant. You can't control how restaurants can cook their food, by the way. And let's say you're at IHOP or some kind of pancake house or just any restaurant that specializes in breakfast foods. If your omelet comes to you, let's say you order omelet because you're thinking three eggs, vegetables, meat. I'm good to go, right? If your omelet is fluffy and moldable, it's not a regular th three cracked eggs. Yeah. That probably has pancake batter into it. And then when you log it, you're like, whoa, 40 grams of carbs or 60. And they could be higher. And you're like, oh my God, where'd that come from? And then you later find out, oh yeah, some of these places put pancake batter in there so that their omelets look prettier and they're fluffier and they can flip them easier. I just want you aware, you don't have to track forever. Once you get into the groove of things and kind of get an idea of what carbs are in what and where you can eat and what you can have, you kind of can just start tattling that stuff up in your mind and maybe every once in a while go back to your carb tracker or macro tracker and just make sure you're still on point with your mental calculations. So we're at the point, we're gonna put this all together. I'm gonna to give you a scenario just to help you put this together. Let's say you've had dinner, the kitchen is closed, okay? You're sitting there watching TV and you're like, hmm, kinda, kinda wanting something. A few minutes later, hits you again, and you're like, hmm, that really sounds good. I think I really want that. Stop. Okay. At this point, you need to think to yourself, say, huh, did that gradually build up? Or did that hit me really hard and fast? Like, I can't stop thinking about it. Because at this point, determines what you do. If it gradually built up on you, maybe you're bored. Maybe you're thirsty or hungry. That's the next thing that you need to identify is, is it thirst or is it hunger? Think, think about what you ate today. Do, you know, this is why tracking would come in handy because you could see where your fat and protein macros are. Make sure you're under 20. Be like, you know, maybe my protein was a little low or maybe my fat was a little low. It's not carrying me over to my next meal. And then think about how much did you drink, you know, how many bottles of water or how many ounces of water did you have? Maybe it's not that you just need more water. Think about it like say, did I get enough electrolytes today? Maybe you just need eight to 10 ounces of water with some electrolyte powder in it and you'll be good to go. Um, you know, maybe you go ahead and drink something and you go into to, to distract yourself. You do some stuff to distract, to clear your mind, and at the end of the hour, 
you're still kind of craving. Maybe at that point it is true hunger and maybe you should have something like a protein bar or a fat bomb to help you uh, because you know that you maybe your macros were a little bit low or maybe you're kind of at that point trying to see you might need a little more protein or uh, fat macros to hold you over because you're still learning and tweaking your macros. Now, let's say it hits you all of a sudden, you gotta have it, you go into distracting yourself. It got better, good to go. Let's say it didn't get better, you still really want it. At that point, after you distracted yourself, you're at the one hour mark, go ahead and just recognize you had a, a crappy day that day and you're going to have a treat. You need to treat it as a treat. Think of it as a treat. Say, hey, you know, I, I had a crappy day. This craving's not one away. I'm, I, I tried distracting myself. I'm just gonna give myself a little something. If all else fails and you do treat yourself and you're still hungry or whatever, take a nap, just go to bed and let tomorrow be a new day for you. That's just a scenario. It's just a way to kind of tie in all these things that we talked about so that you don't have a cheat meal. I, I don't want uh, one little slip up to turn into something big and, and start you all over from square one. I want you to get to that fat adaption and start have some flexibility so in case you go out and have a romantic dinner or a birthday party or whatever, you have that flexibility. And don't be afraid to ask for help if you know that you need the help. So at this point, I will give my motto. Uh, your journey begins with you. Don't overcomplicate it. Pick a meat, pick a fat, pick a vegetable or two. And just start your journey because you can tweak it as you go. I hope this helps you regain some control over yourself so that you can be successful on your journey. And see you next time. Bye, everybody.